Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to, well, not only this webinar and question and answer session today, but also welcome to the year two, uh, 2021. Um, first year of this decade of action, as the UN calls it. And, uh, well, we all, we all thought that uh, this decade of action would start 2020, and this has been a very challenging year. Um, and now we're going to take on these challenges um, this year and uh, we'll turn um, our society, our economy and uh, everything around us to uh, well, a, something better, something that we really desire. And this is how we can turn a crisis into a solution. And in this spirit, um, as I said, I'd like to welcome you today and I'd like to welcome you to the European Biome Credit Design Challenge. I'm Fabian Wojtlinski, I'm uh, founder and director of Biomacry Academy, and with me today is Paul Hoffman, co-founder of the Academy, and um, he will guide us through the collaboration platform that we're going to use, and I now will um, use this opportunity to introduce you again really briefly to the European Biomacry Design Challenge. So it's actually not the case that we started today. Um, this challenge opened in November and it, it opened with something that we call the swarming process. Swarming, that means we get a lot of people together. We, get, we create a, a community of change makers and we use this swarm in order to source the challenges that we're gonna work on in this um, idea form. And um, well, maybe to start with, it's it's more than an idea thorn. So what we start is we we work in teams, of course, we work on challenges, and um, it's going to take about three months until uh, there will be solutions that will be submitted on the platform. And uh, this idea thorn is connected to the global biomimicry design challenge. Uh, so it's not that you only uh, participate either in the European or the global one. We work together with the Biomimicry Institute in the US to um, bring the strength of Europe then to the global challenge and to solve problems uh, even on a bigger scale there. And together with the Institute, we also provide uh, to incubation um, processes and to incubation programs. The one is uh, the Kabaim project um, incubator. It's uh, it runs on the Swarm platform and it runs in a very similar manner as the European Design Challenge. And the second one is the biomimicry launchpad of the, um, of the Biomimicry Institute. So our uh, finishes and uh, the, the winners basically of the European Design Challenge will be invited for the Global Challenge. And the winners of the Global Challenge will then be invited to enter the launchpad. Eventually that leads into the, um, into the selection process for the Ray of Hope Prize, which is a prize um, dedicated to bio-inspired solutions, and it's worth 100,000 euros to kick off your startup. However, we're not a, but we don't expect that every one of you will create the, the next startup, the next zebra or even unicorn startup. It's also about social innovation. It is about finding solutions that you can bring into industry or um, create value for society um, at large. So also business solutions, of course, have that goal, but they have an economic aspect. And this is very important to um, us at the Biomimicry Academy and in the consortium around the European Biomimicry Alliance that started the um, European Design Challenge, because what we want, we want to have solutions that are really applicable, that are applied for society and on the market. Because only that is something, only something that is taken up by people, is, oh, is is set to have an impact, really, to change our our world in a way that we desire it. So, um, with this uh, introduction, I would like to um, show you briefly the material, the resources that we um, brought together for for you, that we assembled for you. Um, and that you mostly know already probably because they are on the websites on the biomimicry.com slash website and on the swarm.com website. 
but I'd still like to share um, and uh, guide you through these, these resources uh, just briefly before Paul then takes over and we'll talk a bit about the collaboration, the unique collaboration process on the Kabayam Swarm platform. Um, Paul, can you allow me to share my screen? You should be allowed. I already allowed yeah, it to you. you. Thank you, thank you. Works. Uh, so what you see here is the um, the start, the landing page of the European Environment Cree uh, Design Challenge. Um, you probably all know this website because you registered through it. Um, it is. It gives you uh, already links to resources, so it uh, it tells you something about how the challenges are set up. What uh, what we have sub challenges, so um, they focus on reducing or uh, reversing emissions, uh, new materials and resources, um, cyclic flows of any kind, and then the social uh, social innovation um, sec section. Um, and you can get uh, more information if you click this link. The second link um, leads you well to, to an introduction about biomimicry at large. So uh, we talk about the biomimicry design challenge. However, it's not exclusive to uh, just people who are experts already in biomimicry. It's, ev it's for everybody who wants to engage and wants to learn from nature, who, has, who is inclined to value nature as a source of information, but also as something that we are connected to and we want and we need to give back to our surrounding. But also nature creates solutions that are effective, efficient, resilient, adaptable, um, and uh, sustainable by default. That means it's the best source to draw inspiration from for all the major problems that we're facing today. So if you look into circle economy and regenerative business, um, these are all uh, subjects that are linked to the values that we can learn from when we look into, into nature. So this is why has such a huge value beyond where it originally comes from. And if you learn, want to learn more about really, there is a, well, of course, an introduction video by myself, and um, I'll skip that now because it's about the platform and uh, Paul will introduce us to that. Um, and then there are two more sections about the benefits. Uh, so what can, what can you gain from participating in the challenge and then winning the challenge, but also just really participating. That means through the process, through collaborating in teams, you will already uh, gain a lot and this section tells you a bit about it and um, then about the conditions and requirements or uh, the, the time frame and um, what uh, what you could well what you are expected to invest into the, the into the process in time but um, but that really depends on the on the team process that uh, Paul will talk about in, in, a, in a minute so um, I would like now to jump to the uh, collaboration platform. And here we have another brief page that doesn't go so much into detail. Um, you probably all have seen this platform already. If not, go to swarm.kabayam.com and register it for free for experts and change makers. And uh, you will get to the this landing page here of the European Bank Design Challenge. And um, what we have here is really have the the heart the heart essence of what you need to know when you start the uh, European challenge. Here on the first of January, that is today, we start the challenge. We have this kickoff seminar. You get to know how the platform works, and um, we start the process of forming teams um, or how we call them swarms uh, to work on the challenges. Um, then one in one month, um, there we have, we have basically three sections um we have uh, the the understanding and the research <clears throat> um phase uh human-centered research and contextual research phase um that ends on 5th of february 5th of march march one uh, month later the biological research phase um is supposed to be finished 15th of april is then the submission of the final solutions and then may here on the complete right hand side is um you, you can expect the results to be published 
and uh, the winners um, to be announced. And um, you can enter directly with your results you have here into the global design challenge and uh, give going through a feedback round with your mentors to prepare to have even a better start in the global challenge. Now, if you scroll down, you see the challenges <clears throat> that we're working on. And uh, this is not exclusive, right? If, if you, there are teams out there, if you have um, questions that you want to solve, you have brought something to the table today, you can still work on this, but these are the challenges that we sourced from the swarm of experts of biomimics throughout the last two months. So it's uh, about self-adaptive packaging. It's um, about a challenge, how we turn the power plants, which are carbon producers into carbon sinks. Um, uh, we have a challenge um, sponsored by a, a, um, a partner of ours, Circonnect, about nature inspired travel. Really interesting, more social innovation and mobility challenge. Um, a very interesting material challenge is how can we substitute leather for um, high demand applications like the mobility sector and then a social innovation challenge about what can we learn from nature to create better communities and this is actually something that we are working on and this is where the combined platform was inspired to uh, to to be brought to life down here it's again a a, a summary of what uh, the challenge is about, what you can basically win, either win the challenge um, and maybe win the Way of Hope prize eventually, but also gain um, experience, gain exposure, gain, gain connections um, through the process itself. Um, and down here are the evaluation criteria. So as I said, we have a three-step process. We, have, we start with human-centered design, we then go into bio-inspired design, into the biological research, and then we turn both inputs into a solution that is, um, is meaningful for, um, for the market and for society. So this, um, the, the social implication. We have a fourth aspect that, that we take into consideration uh, when we evaluate solutions, and this is the symbiotic collaboration. What does that mean? It means that we, value and we promote with everything we do on Kabayam, we promote the collaboration between individuals and between teams. So the difference between this challenge and maybe any other idea thon that you have uh, participated in is that we, we support and we expect that you actually help other teams who might, whom you might normally see as competitors. But we are all in here together to create solutions that are meaningful for, 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 for society. So what we introduced is a reward system where you gain points when you help others. That means when you help other teams to excel in their project, you get the points which actually help you yourself to eventually win the challenge. So with this set, I would like to hand over to Paul, and I'm looking forward to his introduction to the Kabayam Swarm Innovation Platform. Perfect time. My son is crying in the background <laughs> because I'm sitting at home. So hopefully you see my screen now. So Fabian, do you see my screen? No? Uh, yes, we do. Okay. And you see the platform, basically, hopefully. We see the messages. See the messages, then I will um, show you. We'll use this one. Perfect. Now I have the right one. Okay, now let's start with the introduction of the platform. Um, uh, maybe I introduce myself at first. Uh, I was a little bit confused though. My son was crying in the background. Uh, sorry for that, jumping in in, the, in that way. But yeah, I'm Paul Hoffman. I'm a trained uh, bioengineer. Uh, I'm living in Berlin with my uh, wife and my uh, two beautiful children. And yeah, I will guide you through the uh, Cobion platform, uh, which I founded with Fabian together with the Biomimicry Academy. Now, I think two years ago, we started this adventure 
uh, to build some kind of these uh, platform and to bring biomimicry to Europe and to boost it here. So it's very exciting to have the first um, design challenge. So maybe all of you know um, already the um, start screen of the platform. So where you normally enter the platform and that is uh, what Fabian showed you already. And then you can basically click here on enter the swarm on the side, and then you basically enter the swarm. If you are logged in like me, you will uh, forward it directly to your dashboard. But um, uh, when you're not, are not logged in, you will uh, get an additional um, site where you have to provide your login, login credentials and then be forwarded to your site, to your um, a dashboard. On your dashboard, you see basically your uh, collaboration points, which uh, are based on the reward system that um, Fabian introduced to you shortly. So here you see these kind of ED, uh, VC points, and that's are basically the points you can earn by contributing the uh, European Biomimicry Design Challenge. Then we have some kind of karma points, which reward you to log in to post. So it's more about that you are active on the platform. And then we already had another challenge running on this platform. And there you see basically this Chamon challenge points, but this challenge is uh, not active anymore. And then you can basically um, um, join the swarms of the platform. We have different swarms on the platform. One of the swarms is the European Biomimicry Design Challenge. And that's the swarm I will be focusing on. But if you want, you can basically click in here and have a look over all the swarms we have on the platform. And uh, there are many, some like we have this project, project accelerator, which you can get access after the challenge if your uh, project uh, wins. We have the European Biomimicry Design Challenge, like I uh, told you. We have the Global Swarm. So basically all biomimicry people who are active on our platform. And then we have a space for our Biomimicry Academy students where they can have their uh, discussions during their um, training uh, to become a bio biomimicry practitioner. But we will start from the dashboard now. And uh, basically what you can do now is after uh, accessing your uh, dashboard, you can enter the design challenge. And when you enter the design challenge, you will come to the um, start screen Fabian provided to you already. So um, um, here we have the challenges like Fabian told, we already sourced from uh, um, biomimics around uh, Europe for the last two months. There is the opportunity, and that is what I wanted to highlight again because Fabian mentioned it uh, in a short note. You have the possibility to create your own challenge and bring your own challenge in if you want. So if someone in this crowd now of these 40 people who are in this call wants to create a challenge that is totally possible, uh, please contact us at contact at cobiome.com until the end of the week. And we will set up this challenge in the European Biomimicry Design Challenge for you. And all the Swarm members have the opportunity to join these ch challenges that are supplied by um, participants. That is a, uh, something I want to highlight here. So if you really have a topic you want to drive forward, you want to push forward with uh, bioinspired innovation, go ahead and uh, contact us at contact at cobion.com. To go now a little bit further, uh, Fabian introduced to you the time plan or the time schedule. And I will now go a little bit into how we work together in the teams when you join a challenge. So basically you see now these five challenges we already have. And I'm uh, basically the challenge owner of two challenges, which is the power bank, uh, power plants to carbon sinks challenge and this uh, letter substitute challenge that are both challenges that are hosted by me. I just will now enter one challenge to show you how it looks like when you enter a challenge. The first um, thing you have to do to basically become part of the challenge if you want to work on a challenge. And here again, it is very crucial. You can work on several challenges in once. So you are not limited to work on one challenge. If you have two or three challenges you really like, you can join them 
because we are working in this swarm process, in this process of collective intelligence, we are not limiting the people to the challenges. We either, either let the people swarm around the challenges and it is possible that one bee goes from one swarm to the other to give you this kind of uh, metaphor. So um, the first you, you should do is click on join and um, that will stand here if you are not a member already and then you are part of this challenge. And in the challenge room, we have different um, uh, co-creation tools for you to work on the challenge. At first, we have the co-creation uh, um, uh, opportunities or tab. There you, is the uh, discussions board where we work together in the discussions in the different phases of the, uh, of the challenges. And you see, we already um, have this guided approach. So you basically have all um, discussions already set. So we will work in the first part. So in the get ready part in this discussion, we want, will work in the second part in understanding your challenge in this discussion and so on. So we will basically go step by step through this process in the challenge. And if you uh, want to start now with working on the challenge, you can basically click on get ready. And there you get all the informations you need to start to work on the challenges like Fabian told you and guide you through the process. We have this here uh, again in a more uh, detailed way. So you basically have a whole post where everything is um, provided to you where we go through step by step. And then we can post and reply under this discussion to basically fill this with life and content. So that's basically the first thing. And that is when you have content that relies to this certain step of the process of the biomimicry design challenge. Additionally, we have the opportunity that you can chat with the whole team. So maybe you have a question which is not belonging to one of the steps or something like this, or you just want to maybe have an open chat to arrange a team meeting or something like this. You can use the chat function. And then a chat function, like you see here, I already posted a good article I found today about why it is support and so important to have a really plant-based leather substitute and not these hybrids uh, from plant and plastic, which are already on the market, but in the end they make more harm than good to the environment because they are not recyclable. That is one of the, of the features we have to keep in mind when we talk about things like that, because we use plastics in combination with natural materials. And afterwards, you cannot really um, recycle this kind of material. And so they are basically an end life pro product, which is not in the way we think about um, sustainability. And here you can have basically this kind of exchange of information and chat around maybe team meetings or something like this. Then you have the opportunity if you know someone who is not on the platform now or who is uh, on the platform but not in the, in the uh, challenge in the moment, you can basically click on invite and then you can basically invite people to the challenge you are currently working on by just sending an invite. So you basically can search a member and then you can basically send him an invite. Then we in embedded a whiteboard solution for, for you so uh, that we can work in a design or uh, visual way together. And that is basically a Miro. Um, maybe some of you already know this kind of uh, um, uh, um, um, software um, where you can work on. So basically we have some kind of canvases here provided to you, but it is really up to the team to design this in the way that they can work with. And uh, basically my um, work in this challenge as the challenge owner will be to help you in these canvases to provide you maybe with new canvases to a little bit steer and manage what you are due in this kind of um, uh, um, working environment. 
And at the end, we have a submit button. So if uh, the work is then uh, basically um, done in the future, you can submit your progress uh, via this button. And then we can basically start to work on the next phase of the challenge. And that is basically how the platform is working in a nutshell. Uh, it was a very fast run through and we have provided you some more details. Um, uh, uh, sorry, I have to just go to the side. Some more detailed um, tutorials on the EDBC side of Cobiome. So basically when you enter the European Biomimicry Design Challenge, you will find Fabian, where do I find them? <laughs> On the right hand side here, ah, there, uh, there you, they see are. Power, and you see the EBDC briefing, um, a short introduction, then a how to section with tutorials, videos, and um, the swarm framework, which is a basically the social contract um, that uh, will give you all the, the well, rules and, and framework of how to efficiently work together. And when you go to the how to section, <clears throat> you um, you see the assets uh, that that Paul already described. It's what are swarms? How do we define swarms? And what is different? How are swarms different from groups? Then uh, how do swarms work together in projects? And the European Design Challenge and the challenges inside um, the framework of the EBDC are projects basically. Then how do you create on projects? It's also what um, Paul just outlined and uh, an introduction to the whiteboard because it's one of the um, major co-working tools that we provide. So, yeah, and that's basically how our platform is working and how we, uh, what we provide to you. And yeah, that is uh, basically everything I wanted to show you from the platform side. And now I will uh, come a little bit more into how we basically start to work together from now on. So basically, um, from today on, these challenges are open. So the first step you have to do, or maybe you want to do, is that you uh, go to the biomimicry design challenge uh, page and look for the challenges you like. And Stay up to date the whole week since I mentioned that we will set up new challenges if they coming in from participants uh, during the week or uh, until end of the week. There will be maybe coming up more challenges you want to join in the future. And the first uh, step you do basically is go into the leather substitute uh, challenge if you want to join them. Click on join. And then you basically, I would really like on my challenges um, that everyone who joins the challenge give a short introduction of itself in the chat. So basically you go to the chat and then you just shortly introduce with maybe a picture and some sentences yourself uh, to everyone on the challenge so that everyone knows who is he working together with. And we will have for this challenge an introduction uh, um, a call. And uh, this will be on the, I think, 7th of um, January. So um, uh, this Thursday. And I will provide you more information during the week on the, on the platform. And then we all come together to a Zoom meeting like that, where we basically kick off the challenge. The challenge. And uh, we have an additional call for the uh, carbon sink ch uh, challenge, which I think is on the 8th. So there will be now some uh, more kickoff meetings for the um, specific challenges, where we then go more in detail about what we want to achieve with the challenge, what are, is really the problem we want to tackle, and all this kind of things. So that is what we do basically in the upcoming uh, week. And so the first step for you now uh, until tomorrow is basically join the challenges you want to work on, introduce yourself in the chat on the challenges that everyone knows who he's working with, and then uh, wait for the post of the, of the uh, kickoff meeting. And then we will have uh, additional calls and kickoff meetings with you to um, basically start up the uh, specific challenges. And after that, we will start to work on the uh, co-create uh, um, tasks or basically 
discussions and then uh, on the whiteboard to create ideas for the solutions. So that is basically everything you have to do from now on until the kickoff meetings. And I hope uh, that helped you a little bit to go on with the meetings and the uh, challenge. And now uh, if Fabian doesn't have anything additional, we, we have now the time for you to basically ask questions um, if you uh, have some uh, something and you are uh, open to open your mic and uh, speak up so you don't have to post it in the chat like I'm like I mentioned before. So you can now open up your mic and uh, start to ask your questions if you want. If Fabian doesn't have anything additional. Yeah, just maybe mentioning um, I'm going to be mentoring the natural community um challenge where um there will be participants uh, from the biomicry academy joining with their projects so this is actually something derived from the students of ours and um we also have um vanessa here and i hope i don't put you on the spot here <laughs> but she is the host of the um nature inspired travel um challenge and together we will um we'll mentor this project the um, the packaging challenge is hosted by um, a an agency here in Hamburg and Germany, and we will announce the kickoff meeting, or they will announce the kickoff meeting later this week. So there was the question again, um, where to find the how to section. So there is this hover menu on the right hand side of the screen. Um, and uh, this is meant to be a help section, right? You can enter here, you can find tutorials, the framework, you can find the briefing. It's on the right hand hover menu. Is there anyone out there who brought a challenge that they would like to work on? I'd be very interested to learn about that. Maybe Vanessa wants to introduce a little bit uh, or say something about her challenges if, uh, challenge if she wants. Um, yeah, ba basically the, the circular and nature inspired travel challenge, it's all, uh, it's all about um, tackling the challenge of the transport sector because it's the, the only sector where carbon emissions keep on rising in Europe and all over the world. And yeah, and we also observed in, in the current pandemic the, the impact on it, on, on the, the quality of the air in cities, on our health and et cetera. And we also know that um, once uh, times changes again, we will need to have uh, better solutions uh, to keep um, coming back. So um, the idea is to look at nature and how, how can we find solutions um, to, um, to, um, na to nature inspired tra uh, traveling technologies. Currently there's really, a really broad range already available that most of the people do not know yet. And, um, and it's also not, it's a question of awareness and also attractiveness. Uh, and the idea of this challenge is to really connect technology with nature and people uh, to have these three components uh, and by that uh, develop a campaign to, to raise the awareness and also the access to, to these technologies uh, that people um, start, start using it um, because they know it and they have the uh, possibility to, to use it. So that's, that's a very brief overview of that. And um, yeah, it's, I'm excited to, uh, to work on, on that with, um, with those of you who are interested in it and um, yeah, and see what's, what's going to happen. <laughs> Everything is open basically.
Yeah, the, the great thing about this challenge is also in our discussions, it's um, it's not so much about re like redesigning the car, right? It is about coming up with a, with a transport solution, holistic transport solutions. It's more a social innovation challenge. Yeah, yeah I also have a question on, on the okay. system. This karma points and this point system looks very interesting. And I wanted to know, like, how does this work? Like, from... <laughs> yeah. So basically, there is. Oh, Fabian, you can go ahead. I can go. So basically, there's an algorithm in the background, uh, which we created in a software uh, called Airtable, and this will basically track different things you do on the platform. So karma points are more for interacting with the platform. So you get karma points for basically logging in every day, looking at your profile, things like that. That is our uh, the section of karma points. And the EDBC points are based on um, posts and discussion contributions in the, uh, uh, in the EDBC challenges. So basically every time when you take part in a discussion or do a post in a chat on the EDBC challenges, you get um, additional EDBC points. So um, you more you work on the challenges, you more you provide your knowledge, you more you uh, work together with the others so more points you create and that is not limited to one challenge so basically you can get these points by working on four challenges and the idea behind that is that we not want to fix people on one challenge um, the, the point is I, I have done the, this kind of hackathons uh, design sprints since many times I worked in a big pharma company I have uh, was the program manager of the innovation hub there and I always see when I work together with people there in design sprints that uh, some people are really good in one part of the process, but they don't have really uh, fun to do the other uh, parts of the process. So basically you have someone who's really good in ideas, uh, uh, in creating ideas, or he's really good in doing prototyping. So he can provide his specific knowledge basically to all the challenges if he wants. So basically when you are good in combining things and creating ideas out of research data, you are the guy who is in the ideation process really valuable for all teams. So you basically can provide this kind of, of expertise and knowledge, your skill directly in this part. And basically you can say, oh, I'm not the real guy who is thinking about prototypes, but I can give feedback on prototypes. And then others can take over the process of creating the prototypes and you can then give feedback. So everyone can get points by contribute and it is not limited to that you have to stick to the process or you do have to do everything. You can provide your knowledge at the point where you are good at. And that is basically the idea behind uh, why we have this uh, kind of a rewarding system and that is what we imagine for the future in teamwork anyway that we basically give people the opportunity to work with their skill set and their knowledge on challenges and provide them in a specific part of the challenge but then they are able to go out and through the um, uh, um, reward system it is still tracked that they have provided provided knowledge and IP to the challenge. And so in the end, they can get something back. That's the idea behind. So you don't have to be part of the project from front to end, but you still will be recognized for your value you uh, bring to the table for the specific project. That's the idea behind. To put this into a broader perspective, um, the European Biomedical Design Challenge is the, the, the start um, for this platform and is supposed to grow into a, um, a tool for what we call the, the gig economy. So what you, what you do is you provide your knowledge, your data, whatever you, you feel like, like sharing, you provide that to a project and you score your points for this project. And that gives you ownership and gives you a like an, a, a part of the of the review uh, a revenue the rewards and the revenue that is created by that project right so in other projects in the future this might be monetary value in our case in ebdc it's the ebdc points that you score on the on the challenge and they translate into part of the um of the evaluation in the end the karma points themselves they will also be used 
at the later stage in the platform, at the moment, they just um, basically represent how much you collaborate. Does it open your question? Uh, does it answer your question? Yeah, yes, that, that and um, this uh, reward system, like, is it just uh, in general to know or is there some, some price in the end or something like that? <laughs> so here in the European design challenge, it is about, um, in the end, it's about winning the challenge, of course, but you win that by scoring points, partly, right? Partly by the solution, partly by scoring points. So 75% is the solution and your team. So you should have to a diverse team. You should integrate different backgrounds. You should, of course, create a solution that is buyer-inspired, that solves human needs, and that is business viable. That is 75%, but 25% are the points you score through collaboration. So um, if we want to put it to the extreme, if you come up with a great solution, but you did that all yourself, then you are missing these 25 points. Yeah. Um, there is another question here, which is about the uh, time investment or dedication. Um, and that refers a bit to what Paul said before. Um, you can participate in, in any um, amount that you want um, because that will score you and the team and the challenge some points. And if you decide to uh, participate in the research and uh, then leave the challenge afterwards, that's fine as well because you provide value to the challenge. Um, we expect that it's about eight to 10 hours a, a week to do the research, um, to do ideation, to meet with your team. But if you, um, if you, if you just have two hours per week and um, you want to participate with these two hours, that is fine as well. Just make it clear to the team. Expectations need to be clear. But if there are a lot of researchers and in the end, it's just a handful of people who go through the process as one team and the others contribute, um, partially, that is fine as well. Um, Miro is aboard uh, Pernil uh, from, from Denmark. Thank you. Uh, welcome. <laughs> um, is, is asking where can I learn more, more about using Miro? Miro is a uh, is a collaboration tool that is out there. You can create a free account, um, and then of course there are paid accounts to have teams and so on. We provide uh, access to the Miro boards that you use on the challenges. And there are um, tutorials and introductions on, on YouTube if you want to go into detail. Yeah, so basically that's what I wanted to say too. There are good tutorials for Miro. Just type it in at uh, YouTube in the search bar and you will find uh, um, some basic introductions. And that is basically all what you need for the beginning. And then you start to get used to the, to the program really easy. I have another uh, question from Cleopatra. Um, she asked, normally a team has to have uh, five members. Do we have a maximum number of team members? So that is basically not how we work. So there is not a maximum um, amount of team members and even not a minimum amount. So basically, yes, of course, it doesn't make sense to, to do a challenge with three people. That is something we have to, to, to take in mind. But there is, uh, uh, so basically starting with four people upwards, we, we will do the challenges. And the, the point behind is that we don't limit the number because we want to engage the teams to organize a little bit by themselves. So um, maybe we have 20 people on the, on the um, challenge. It is possible that they basically split themselves in sub teams. So that is then something the project manager will ask. So that they basically can do a team process, teaming process, and then you can basically have a Zoom call like this, um, uh, uh, invited by the by the uh, project owner or challenge owner, and then you basically create teams, and then you will have a research team, you will have a prototyping team, you will have different teams in the challenge. That is all possible, but we don't want to limit really uh, the knowledge uh, uh, on, on, on a certain amount. And we don't expect more than 50 people on one challenge in the moment. And therefore um, we think that is uh, possible to uh, uh, work with, with an unlimited uh, uh, challenge for uh, people, people-wise. And the other thing is that we engage the people to uh, basically form sub-teams to drive different uh, tasks forward 
if um, the uh, group is too big. And that in the end helps everyone because um, I already see that many of, of you posted that they cannot commit hours or, or time. And basically if you create sub teams that will reduce the workload for others because they don't have to, uh, to uh, basically involve in, in, in topics that they may be not uh, good at and they don't like. That's what I told before, like we want to engage the people to really work on, on um, things they, they like. So uh, we will have maybe a research team and then uh, the people into really like to re do research. And then they basically can go out and say, lean the back, uh, uh, back a little bit in the prototyping phase or in the ideation phase, if that is not uh, what they are good at or they provide skills to. I hope that will answer your question. There's <clears throat> there's another um, interesting comment also from Lydia um, who mentioned why we start with human-centered design if we want to create solutions that are holistically beneficial for both people and the environment. Now, um, that is a very valid question and um, that takes us back maybe into reviewing biomimicry a bit. Um, biomimicry is, um, or biomimicry has the the characteristics that um, that it is like if you learn from nature, it always combines the needs of a system, of the surrounding, of the environment, and of an individual. Uh, the, this is how nature works, and this is what we have to learn and what we have to take from nature and translate it to the human realm. Now, um, this is not so much an introduction to biomimicry. There are great introductions also by Lydia, by the way, um, but also by Janine Benius and Dana Baumeister um, and by the Biomimicry Institute and they can be found on YouTube. So um, if you look into that, um, you will get a get good introduction to biomimicry and the values um, and how you work to take both into considerations always, the environment and humans. However, we need to um, also, of course, take into account human needs because in the end, it's humans, it's society, uh, the government or companies that pay for the solutions, even if they are designed to benefit the environment. So we need to take into account these human needs or also economic needs. And these, uh, this refers to the, the, the three dimensions of sustainability. Of course, there is environmental sustainability, but it has to be in, um, it has to be orchestrated with um, with social um, sustainability and economic uh, sustainability. Um, are the challenge own as part of the swarm? Well, not necessarily. Um, that really depends. Um, I think, if I recall correctly, Vanessa um, wants to be part of the swarm rather than the mentor team. Um, I myself um, want to bring forward the natural community um, project and challenge. So I'd rather mentor this team. And um, I think, well, Paul might might have to find uh, it's his role in, in as a mentor of, or as a facilitator of the team or rather as a participant. Moreover, we will have also other mentors, right? We will have more biologists on the teams when we come into bio biological research. We, want, we might have experts on the topics um, if we need to dive deeper into technical issues, for example. So these are mentors as well, and they might be part of the team for a while and then leave again. So, so basically there's another uh, question about um, when will the request to join process uh, be uh, completed? So basically, um, we, we are not limiting uh, the time frame. So basically, everyone can join every time. The problem is that then he has basically a hard time to, to uh, basically get all the information that he's up to date to, to work on the challenges. I think if you join until in, in the next two or three weeks, everything will be fine. Um, I think afterwards it would be hard for you to catch up with all the informations um, that are already there. Um, so I think um, in two weeks, you could expect that there is so much content already created that this is really hard for someone to join uh, the whole, whole challenge. But it is possible to 
basically bring someone for a specific task. So if you know someone who is really good in, in doing um, research and basically uh, can create really good questionnaires, you can invite him, he can join the challenge, he can help us to create the questionnaires. We need to do the life standard design. Yes, it was uh, mentioned here. And of course, that is something uh, everyone can, and then he can basically go out again. So um, it is really depends on if you are there for a specific task, you can join anyway. If you want to be part of the of the challenge the whole time and will want to be act more or less active at a certain stage of the challenge, then I think uh, in two weeks, it will be hard for you to catch up everything uh, we then have done until then. Yeah, and there is room to uh, basically bring in new challenges until Friday this week. That is, um, um, it, it is possible to participate as mentors. So basically, every swarm member is a mentor. So I don't want to basically have these hierarchy levels. Um, basically, you can um, have your your you can set up your profile on the um, Kobayon platform as a mentor because we have an expert search in the uh, platform, and when you then search for mentors, you basically get these mentors and then uh, people. I I will show you this maybe. Um, so if you are really interested into working as a mentor. You, when you are on the platform and you are in your own profile, and then you have the opportunity to create a uh, short biography of yourself. And everything you write in this biography, in this about me section is searchable over the expert search. So if you want to be a mentor, um, for the for the part of um, finding inspiration in biology because you are a biologist and you can provide this knowledge and help that would be really helpful because uh, that is what I experience as a bioengineer too that um, in the most uh, challenges I tackle with non um, biologists in biomimicry is that you need someone who is bridging the gap between the the question you have and the uh, challenge and the problem you uh, identified and then finding the inspiration in nature and then translate the nature inspiration to uh, a, a human solution or a solution uh, which uh, humans can benefit from. And that's a hard part for non-biologists, but most of the time for people who studied biology, this is uh, more easy because they see these connections uh, much faster. And therefore you can basically put this in, in this section and the swarms can then go over find expert if you um, basically want to uh, uh, search someone and then you can basically click in like um, field of expertise, um, like psychology. I studied psychology. So uh, additionally to my bioengineering study, I psych, uh, study psychology. And if you need someone who's an expert in psychology to basically create questionnaires or something like this, you can have this here. And so everyone can put in his bio, his expertise, and the teams of the different challenges can search uh, for people uh, in this uh, expert search if they need help for certain uh, uh, things or if they need a mentor. And additionally, you can basically go in every challenge now and uh, make a post in the first uh, um, in the first discussion where you introduce yourself and um, basically um, apply yourself as an as a mentor. So say I'm uh, I'm a biologist. I will help you with mentoring in the biology part. And when you then post it in, in the challenges, the teams can go uh, back to this and um, uh, make calls with you or basically chat with you about certain topics if they want. So we want to basically do this really open and not to stick too much to processes or hierarchies. 
Um, I think everyone can be a mentor if he has a certain skill, which he's really good at, he can mentor others. And that's the idea behind. And to give you a little bit more broader perspective, one of our students created a community management system, which is based on, on nature. And one of the things she created in their community management approach was that um, you are, when new members in the future join the platform, that's the idea behind, seven people out of the platform with certain skills will be then become automatically the mentor of the new member. That's the idea about this. So it's helping. So the swarm helps itself to provide information to new members. And so you see, we want to have that really open and we want that everyone can bring in what he can brings to the table for the specific project. Um, Paul was talking about expertise and um, one thing that we should mention is that um, the, the with the swarm we want to create uh, with a small platform we want to create a safe environment where everybody is free to share their knowledge without being afraid that is it is misused or uh, extracted and taken away so um there is in the in the um in the framework but also in the terms of condition in, in terms and conditions um it says that ip that is shared on the platform stays on the platform um it is traceable who put in this IP. So you own your IP. It's not us, it's not anybody else. You own the IP that you share on the platform and you are rewarded in with, with EBDC points now for the for the European Biomicro Design Challenge and later on with um, part of a revenue created by industrial projects. So you keep on owning your, your, your content. You also, also can delete it at any, at any point. Now there is, in a social contract, but also legally binding in terms and conditions, it says you must not extract information out of the platform. Okay, so um, that is, uh, if, if someone does that, and if you notice someone does, does that really, um, that, is, that is, is a breach of our um, confidentiality agreement. So that is meant to create really a safe space that we can open up here and uh, be be sure that the IP we, sh I sh we share is used for a good purpose and that rewards are attributed to the owner and to the creator of the content. So basically I will ask uh, um, a question from Zaskia. Of course you can join the EDVC and the GDBC um, apart from each other. It's totally fine in two different teams. Everything is fine. You can do this and there is no no problem at all because the EDBC uh, is backed up by the Institute uh, who is um, running the global challenges our collaboration partner everything is fine so that is that is uh, totally fine so and then there was an um, other question can a mentor also participate in the challenges of course you can be a mentor and a participant in one time that is totally fine and that is what we really want so from you so that you take uh, a specific role. So I'll come back to psychology. Maybe you know the uh, social role theory so that everyone is taking different roles in different social situations. It's like on the platform in different situations, you can take up different roles uh, in, the, in the process. And that's why we don't stick too much to names like mentor and everything else, because in the end, everyone as a coach, is a mentor, is a participant, we all, all this in a certain environment we all have different roles and therefore we engage the people to take these different roles in this different uh, uh, phases of the of the um of the of the of the uh, challenge sorry uh, i was reading the question from lydia if it's possible for me to help finding swarm members for the challenges by sharing the individual challenges on social media yeah, of course, um, you are open to share uh, the challenges uh, on social media. And um, there is the question, is there a material? If you need material for social media sharing, just write me an email over contact at cobiome.com and I will send you all the material we have for the different challenges like the picture, uh, 
and the short introduction texts and all this. Um, you basically can copy paste it from the platform if you want, or you can basically um, uh, use the texts um, we provide you. And if you want to have a link, you can basically send them to the uh, swarm.cobiome.com slash uh, EBDC uh, uh, site, and then they can basically enter the different challenges from there on. Okay, great. I think it's a it's a good point to um, to to yeah end this webinar for today and the question and answer session. Uh, thank you very much. It's been it's been a blast. Also, um, really going through the chat here, and um, I think we're gonna provide that chat uh, on the platform then. Um, on the EBDC page on the Swarm, and um, yeah, since uh, the the hour really uh, went quickly, and we are through for today, um, there are two kickoff meetings for the Swarms um, that Paul Amentus uh, already set up. I will post a doodle for the um, Natural Communities Challenge today, so that you can that we can find a date um, this week to start with and um that is true for the other challenges as well the the doodles or requests or set dates for kickoff meetings with the, the participants with interested participants will follow shortly and with this um yeah i would like to conclude today's meeting thank you very very much um i'm amazed that we have um such a lot of people today in, in the call. We have uh, um, about 200 participants registered already for the European Bioinco Design Challenge. And you know, the, we're just getting started with both the challenge and the platform. And I'm happy to be on this journey with you. So thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, everybody. And we see each other on the platform. Yeah, see you soon.